The Supreme Court wraps up its term on Monday. The court settled some monumental cases this year, and for the first time ever, three women sat in the bench. Here with a look ahead to Monday's final rulings and a look back at an historic year is NPR legal affairs correspondent Nina Totenberg. Nina, good morning to you. Good morning to you. What decisions can we expect to come down on Monday? Well, I think the one that will interest most people is uh, uh, California has a ban on the sale of violent video games to minors. And uh, the constitutionality of that is at issue, and the court will decide that. And about 10 other states have passed similar laws. And we'll see what they have to say, whether that's a violation of the First Amendment guarantee of free speech. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a campaign finance case as well, big uh, testing public funding in Arizona. Gotcha. So still a lot of work to do, big cases on Monday. When you look at mm -hmm. this uh, term so far, what are the most significant cases in your mind? Well, I think probably we'll look back and say that the Walmart case is the most significant. That was the case where uh, one and a half million pe women had brought a class action uh, against Walmart for sex discrimination. And the court, on the key question, set, threw the case out and said that all of the, the, the women couldn't sue as that big a group. Now, all nine justices said the lower courts have used the wrong standard. It's going to make bringing big class action cases, very difficult. That mm -hmm. coupled with another case that was a consumer class action where the court, again, five to four, said the consumers couldn't sue. It's going to make them very difficult. Yeah, the funeral protest case also got a lot of attention this year as well. That's right. That was a case where a group uh, protested at military funerals, and the, the f family of, of the dead soldiers sued and said it was a violation of their rights. Um, and the court said no. Uh, you're allowed to protest at a funeral as long as you do it legally. You go where the police tell you to go. You don't uh, protest so loudly that you invade the funeral in any way. And as a result, I, th I think that a lot of states will pass some sort of laws, which the court implied would be constitutional, laws <clears throat> that will allow protests to be separated from the funeral by a certain number of feet, 300 feet, 500 feet, something like that. This was the mm -hmm. first full term for President Obama's uh, two appointees, Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor. Uh, Nina, what do you think? Did we see a shift in the court's philosophy this year at all? Not really. Both of these justices were, quote, liberal nominees, replacing, quote, liberal justices. Mm -hmm. They're not nearly as liberal as uh, justices were, let's say, 20, 30 years ago, but they're still, compared to the much more conservative members of the court, they are liberal. So the court is still split five to four on a lot of big issues. There are three justices on the court who are over the age of 70. Now, President Obama has, uh, what are we, about, about a year and a half to go in, in this term. Do you expect him to have the opportunity to make any other appointments this go? Um, Barring somebody getting sick, I doubt it. We didn't even hear a hint of a scintilla of the idea that anybody was going to retire this year. This, you know, as the court, tomorrow will be the last day of the court. So we would have, I think we would have heard it. I, ha I have no reason to believe that anybody's retiring. Okay. Nina Totenberg, the legendary Nina Totenberg. We thank you so much <laughs> for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much, Russ. All right. You take care.